What's up, y'all? It's your boy Dawson from D&D TV. I want to thank everybody for rating, commenting, and subscribing. Y'all see the title of this video, so you know I'm about to go in. But first, I want to show y'all a clip of these two gentlemen. First coming up is the clip of James Hall. He is the dude in the shiny uh, gold jacket directing the choir. And then I'll have a video uh, for Pastor uh, Jeffrey Thomas. And I'll be right back with my commentary. Lord says give up that thing that you think you got to live with I knew I was going to get in trouble when, when, when he says don't go there no more when he says delete that number out of your phone when he said unfriend that Facebook buddy and block them because you know every time y'all get together it ain't nothing but trouble What? alright let's go in gospel artist James Hall is filing a lawsuit against a jilted bishop who claims he got the wrong idea when Hall tried to show Christian fellowship. Hall said that when he helped Pentecostal Bishop Jeffrey Thomas through his illness, it was simply an act of kindness, of love. But when Bishop became romantically interested in Hall, pursuing him relentlessly and even flying into jealous, a jealous rage when Hall drew interest in other men and women, According to the lawsuit filed in a Manhattan Supreme Court, and after Hall rejected him multiple times, Thomas took to social media to hint that Hall was involved in a sexual relationship with the pastor of their Cypress Hill Church. He also contacted church members in order to spread more salacious rumors, according to the lawsuit. Hall claimed that Thomas was spreading rumors in an attempt to destroy him and also to destroy his career. Hall stated that there is no justification for his conduct. There is simply no justification at all. Mr. Thomas has never expressed any other purpose to his actions other than some imagined relationship he believes that he had with me and is nothing more than a disgruntled fan. Now, that's what James Hall said after he filed this lawsuit in court. But I'm going to just go ahead and keep it real for y'all. James Hall, the reason why people thought that you all were in a relationship, and I remember this, you know, uh, quite well, uh, on Facebook, there was this picture that was posted on Facebook, and there were so many people who were commenting on it, and there were people, you know, even on my Facebook page, it had circulated through shares and stuff where I guess Bishop Jeffrey had posted this picture of you and him in bed, and that made a lot of people suspicious, suspicious because people were saying, you know, okay, why are two grown men who are, you know, one's in his late 30s, the other one's in his 40s, why are two grown men in the bed together who are supposedly straight? That's, that's what it was. And by looking at that picture, you came back on Facebook and said, I don't need to refute anything. You know, I don't have to go over anything to you people, blah, blah, blah. If it's not what it looks like, this is my friend, he's my brother, and we were just hanging out, blah, blah, blah. But come on, y'all. I don't even I, I wouldn't even do that like that that's just like weird I, I don't know maybe that's you know people do whatever they want to do you know God bless them but that was one of the reasons why another reason why is because this pastor moved from North Carolina up to New York in order to be close to you that was another reason that was suspicious to people why would this particular bishop jeffrey leave his church to go to be closer up there with you all after he only met you i think in 2014 2015 so that was a little suspicion as well now you have filed this lawsuit and you said all this stuff and that he's a disgruntled fan i'm sorry bro i don't believe that a disgruntled fan that you hung out with on multiple times and you guys took all these uh instagram pics and these facebook pics and you all posted them or he posted them on several different occasions it does not sound like this man was a disgruntled fan i also understand that as a gospel artist in the pentecostal church you want to keep up your image you don't want to be another kevin terry or another 
anybody else who got caught up in the scandal. I understand that because the gospel people are not going to accept a guy who practices, who so-called practice homosexuality to lead them into praise and worship, even though there are a lot of men and women who are gay and lesbian and bisexual in churches leading people in praise and worship and even preaching to them and people who have hidden lifestyles who are lay members as well that we don't know about. But my thing to you, James, is that I don't believe you were caught on the blind side with this whole thing. I think you went in knowing what it was, knowing why Bishop Jeffrey moved up there with you, knowing why this man was so close to you. And I understand that he had an uh, illness and you were there helping him. And you're saying that he took that the wrong way. I don't believe that, man. I'm sorry. That's just me. You know, um, I, I just don't believe that he took that the wrong way. I think you knew exactly what was going on and so did he and that when it didn't work out and of course you don't want to lose your bread and butter which is being a minister and also a minister of music. Of course man. Of course, you ain't gonna let nobody come between your money. If the church said, you know, this is how we want you to be, and you know who you are the way you are, whatever that is, and this person right here keeps posting stuff on Facebook because he knows this is what it is, some type of uh, relationship outside of the church, you're looking like, James, you're looking like, okay, man, this is finna mess up my money. So I gotta stop this right here. Because other than being a, a minister of music or a gospel artist, you really don't have anything else to fall back on. You haven't parlayed your uh, your career into acting, I don't think. I mean, you do you write songs and music, but once you have that image of being in the Pentecostal church of someone who is struggling with lesbianism or struggling with homosexuality, you're basically written off. Nobody wants you to come to their conference. No one wants you to come to their camp meeting, their Koji convention, their anything. You're not going to be invited to the Woman Dollar Lose Conference nor the Manpower. That's just how it goes. So I understand the move that you're making by filing this lawsuit, but in people's eyes, your friends and your supporters, it may make you look good to them. But for those of us who are smart and who get, you know, who can peep game, we know what's going on, man. And to me, that's exactly what it is. I hope this situation is rectified and I wish both of these gentlemen nothing but the best. But this is what happens in the church when you have people who are who are forced to live a lie. And I, I've said this time and time on my show, and I'm gonna say this again, last year, and even this year too, I talked to so many women who have dealt with men who were bisexual. They were bisexual, clearly bisexual, but they didn't tell them that. A lot of those men were at the church. And just recently, I was at one of my homeboys' uh, birthday, it was about, about a month ago, and his sister had asked me a question. She showed me this guy on the phone. She was like, he is our assistant pastor. And she was like, he wants to go out on a date with me. And she said, but he said something that made me worry. And I was like, well, what did he say to make you worry? She said that the assistant pastor had said, you know, what are your do's and don'ts in a relationship? And she went down a couple do's and don'ts that she has in a relationship. And he said, okay, would you marry a guy who probably had a relationship with a guy in the past and immediately I said no 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 you're not gonna do that no you're not gonna do that and she was like yeah because I thought why would he ask me that unless he had something that he you know and I'm like of course I'm like <laughs> And, it, you know, it's I, look here. People can do what they want. I know there are women who accept men like that, who who have had, you know, past experiences in, in with men. And so some men accept women like that. I mean, that's what it is. But I just think that the church just houses a lot of closeted men and women who reproduce children and they are in miserable relationships and then they get out and they act out on these these their desires, their true desires when they're not at home, when they're out at the Kojic convention, when they're out on a job vacation or when they're going to their Greek uh, fraternities and sorority meetings and hang up and they act out. And my thing is why live your whole life why live your whole life in a relationship that you really don't want to be in, in a relationship that you really can't be who you are? And for these guys here, James Hall, you're in your 40s, man. This dude right here is in his 40s. It's like, bro, y'all going to keep the lie up for how long? Oh, and another thing. 
I know I can't tell nobody what to do in their relationships or, you know, people could date whoever they want to date and you could take on whatever you want to take on because in relationships, let's be honest, we all take on baggage. And if somebody's baggage happens to be that they used to have, you know, uh, 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 they used to date people of the same sex or they used to do threesomes or they were in porn or they did prostitution or they did anything. I mean, we, we take... On relationships and we take whoever we're dating and we have to make those judgments for ourselves so please know by no means am I saying people who have been certain ways or whatever can't date anybody they want to date y'all we live in a life people have experiences that's why it's called life we all have experiences but what I want people to do in relationships and one thing that I am I am learning and I'm talking to my friends about more and more every day, especially my homeboys and, you know, my 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 homegirls, too, is to be honest in relationships and to ask those important questions, because it's no use to ask those questions three and five and ten years down you know, the road of a relationship, there are some things that we can knock out now, you know, to see if we want to handle or deal with those things in a relationship, you know, before we get into those relationships. And I think especially for my sisters in the church, I I just I just have like a burden on my heart for like for, for especially black women in the church, because I've seen I grew up in the church. I've seen how the husbands cheat. I seen how women were so 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 desperate to get married and then you know uh 6 months down the line they find out secrets about their husbands or the husband didn't he cheated or he cheated with a family member or cheated with another one. I, I saw that stuff growing up so when I do my videos on the church that's where my mind is and on the stuff I hear now it's like I'm working with a client now a grown lady who just lost her son but she told me something a couple of weeks ago that knocked me out that she, you know, her pastor manipulated her through that whole experience and he slept with her and she got pregnant by him. So as a social worker, I hear all this stuff and combined with my own experiences and people I know who've been, you know, messed up by people in the church. It makes that's what fuels me to do these videos because I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one who sees this stuff, who hears people's pain and their opinions on relationships and people they got with who messed them over or people who they got with who gave them a STD. Y'all, this stuff is real. And so I encourage all of us, no matter what your sexual orientation is, no matter what you do, you know, for my married folks, if you're going to be married, be committed and stay committed in your relationships. And if you single and you want to be celibate, hey, I, I, I endorse that. I, I, I really I'm happy for that. Do that. And for y'all singles who, you know, you ain't kind of got it, you know, you still kind of loose and want to hang out and chill. You got one foot in and one foot out. Hey, protect yourself while you out there, you know, and especially for y'all single men and women who are dating People who are married, I don't condone that, but it happens and it happens especially a lot in the church. And I just I just want y'all, you know, to know, man, you know, I, I believe in the law of reciprocity. And so you cheating with this woman's husband or this uh, this man's wife, when you get in a relationship and that thing, the same thing happened to you, you can't really say nothing because you set that in motion. You've already put that in the universe. So it's going to happen to you because that's the law of reciprocity. What you put out, you're going to get back. But these are just my thoughts on my YouTube show. Like I said, I wish everybody the best. I am no uh, clinical psychologist or no relationship expert. But I do know that if you go in a relationship on a lie, you're going to come out a liar. So with everything we do, y'all, especially in relationships involving somebody else, let's just please tell the truth. I love y'all. Thank y'all for listening. It's your boy Dawson. On behalf of me and Denise, we appreciate everything. Y'all take care of yourself and each other. Peace.